Good morning. Good morning. Saturday, March the 4th. And uh, boy, we had some rain, didn't we? We got some wind today. I noticed the creek along the Narrows was like really flowing with water. But you know what? We haven't had much snow this year. So there's not going to be snow melt going into the ground. So what does God do? He sends us rain to replenish the ground. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. You know our needs. You know what the farmers are going to need. That ground needs to have water in it. Thank you, Lord. We're going into the Bible, the King James Bible. And this morning, it's the book of Mark, chapter 9, and we're reading verses 1 to 29. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up to a high mountain apart from themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. And suddenly, when they looked round about, they saw no man any more, save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man of what things they had seen, till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one another what the rising of the dead should mean. And they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elias must come first? And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first, and restoreth all things, and how it is written of the Son of Man, that he must suffer many things, and be set at naught. But I say unto you, that Elias is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and he gnasheth with his teeth, and pine away. And I spake to, the, to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And at oft times they have cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter him no more. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch as many said, He is dead. 
But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he rose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Wow. I'm going to leave it there because that's verse 29. It's exciting, isn't it? It, it? You know, I've read books. I've read many books, especially when I was in the Navy. I would read books in my downtime. And they were exciting novels, works of fiction. And you were enthralled by it, intrigued by it. But I tell you, reading the Bible is the best book that I have ever, ever, ever read. It's just fascinating, fascinating. And I'm on my second time around now. I've never read a book twice. Never, never read a book twice. So we see the transfiguration of Jesus. Isn't it interesting how they knew that Elias, which I think is Elijah, but they call him Elias. I don't know the different ways, Hebrew and all that. Um, and Moses, but they recognized them. Now you've got to think that Elijah and Moses were from a long, long time ago. And yet the disciples knew who they were. I love that. I love that. The transfiguration upon Mount Carmel. And then the spirit and how the disciples couldn't do anything with him. That must have been frustrating for them but they didn't have the Holy Spirit in themselves. And of course, the final line was, and he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. Now, I don't know if that's a word for us right now, how to cast out spirits, but we have the Holy Spirit with us. And so we've, there's been gifts been given. So I don't have all the answers. I really don't. That's something that we may have to look up and try to understand and maybe talk about ourselves. Um, and this is typical of how the New Testament goes. Interpretation of scripture is, is a big debatable thing. Um, so if you, if you want to contribute to that, if someone wants to say something, I'm open, I'm open. We're all learning. We're all learning. This is a journey we take together. I pray that today is going to be a good day for you. Um, as I've said before on Saturdays, there are many people that regard today as their Sabbath. And so uh, Shalom, Shabbat to those that are taking their Sabbath today. And I pray that there are those of you who realize that the Lord did say to us to rest one day of the week, that you do take one day of the week to rest albeit the Lord's Day Sunday or the Sabbath. It doesn't matter. Just take a day of rest. That's what God wants us to do. Take a day of rest and make it holy. Worship him, pray to him, meditate on his word, read the Bible. Set aside time for God. And then when you're in need, he'll set aside time for you. Remember, he loves you. I love you too. Have a great day. Oh, by the way, men's breakfast this morning thank you kate and greg i believe I'm, I'm not too sure about the count 21 22 men there we filled up all the chairs we were filling up the counter there was standing room only thank you lord thank you thank you kate and greg wonderful work you do about bringing men together so that we can strengthen each other with the holy spirit strengthen each other to face the challenges as heads of our families that we face, that we can lean on each other, that we can gain strength from each other and the Holy Spirit, and to know that we're not walking this alone. We face many common enemies, many common temptations, trials, and tribulations. What you're facing today, one of us may face tomorrow or face yesterday. And so share, talk, open up to each other, support each other, love thy neighbor love thy neighbor. Thank you for listening and bye for now.